Hello Richard here, welcome back to another video and today it's a real quick demonstration on how you can use auto ISO to get real nice exposure in challenging lighting conditions. Okay, so I've set up a little demonstration here in the office. It's basically just a shot of a, um, a whiskey box, bottle box thing. Um, and I'm gonna take, I think, four photos. Two where the ISO changes with the lighting conditions change. All I'm doing is closing a curtain, nothing too fancy there, no lights or anything. I'm just window open for the first shot. Oh, sorry, blind open for the first shot, blind closed for the second shot. You'll see as it gets darker on screen. And the second demonstration is going to be where you can accept the, uh, this is something I've learned while doing this video, so it's, I'm really chuffed about that. You can set the camera up to change the shutter speed as you change the focal length. So you may have heard the old rule that your shutter speed should be the same as or higher than your focal length. So if you're shooting at 100th, 100 mil, your, um, your shutter speed should be no lower than 100. If you're shooting sports at 400 mil, your shutter speed should be no lower than um, 400 to avoid camera shake. Uh, not quite a rule I still believe in, but there's two reasons, but that's a story for another video. But basically I can show you on screen how you set this up and the difference it has on each picture. So we are gonna have a quick look at the screen first. So you basically, uh, just one quick disclaimer, this is mainly for uh, Canon photos. If my exposure goes up and down, it's because I'm still just using window light and the sun is in and out. Um, but I think I'm on auto ISO, so it should work. Um, this is using the Canon R6 as a demonstration. Um, it does work on my Canon 5D Mark III, which I think is a 10 year old camera. So hopefully most of the modern um, cameras will be able to do this. Uh, so the menus are Canon, but should be pretty consistent for I know there's Nikon that can do um, auto ISO. I know my old Sony did auto ISO. So it should be pretty pretty good to apply to any camera. So let's have a quick look at the screen now. So basically the first thing on the Canon that we wanna do is we're gonna go into the red menu and it is option two and you can see something there that says ISO speed settings. Click into there and then you have ISO speed which um, is set to auto, which is what we want. You could fix it or something, but we want auto. ISO speed range, we're not gonna talk, that's just what you wanna allow your camera to go to at any point. The auto range is important. This is the maximum or minimum that you can, that you'll allow your camera to go to. So for the purpose of this, we're just gonna leave it on 6400 and we're gonna say okay to that. And then we are, for the first photo, we're gonna tell the camera that we don't want it to go below a 125th of a second. So, once that is all dialed in, this is the picture that we're gonna take. So you can see in the bottom left-hand corner there that we're on 125th of a second. Uh, the aperture is fixed at five, and we are now going to take that photo, and we've got an auto ISO 800. The next thing we are gonna do, you will see me here, the shadows, I'm walking to the window, and there I've just closed the windows, and the camera has instantly adjusted. Perhaps we'll quickly play that again um, in slow motion so you can see that happen. But we're just gonna refocus on the same point and we are gonna take a new photo at those new settings. And we can see there that the camera has fixed the ISO at 125th again and we've now got the two photos. Here's the first photo at ISO 800. And there is ISO 1600 after I close the window. So you can see that the bottle, the exposure on the bottle box is pretty much similar. There's obviously more shadow behind the brighter one because there's a harsher light coming through the window, but the exposure on the subject is pretty consistent and great when you get that instant change in light. So that was it, that was real quick how you can set the ISO up to um, be automatic. That light all of a sudden went when I shut the window, the camera adjusted and it gave you a pretty even exposure. The next thing I'm gonna show you quickly is where you are, you may zoom in and your focal length may change from, let's say, uh, I think I was at 50 for the first photo and it may go up to say 85. You wanna make sure the shutter speed stays above that focal length. So there's another setting that you can hit, you can change in the camera, which we are going to do now. 
So here we are back into the menu options, back into the ISO speed settings, and we're now gonna come down to the minimum shutter speed and we are gonna make it auto. And if we now head out of there and we are gonna go into the viewfinder to see our subject again. So here we are, we are back looking through the camera at our whiskey box and we are currently shooting on about 35, 35 maybe, 45 um, millimeters on the focal length. And if we just sort of half press the button, you can see we are, it's suggesting an 80th of a second. So let us take that photo. So that photo has been taken. I think I must have it on silent shutter. Um, but what we are gonna do now is we are going to zoom in slowly so we started off like i said around 45 mil maybe and we are now going in and i'm, I'm going to go all the way into let's go all the way into 105 uh, which is not a very good composed photo but we don't mind and you can see that it is now giving us 160th of a second now the iso has also changed accordingly um, i think when we were back out on 45, we were having an ISO 500 because obviously the shutter speed is lower and letting in more light. As I zoom in, we lose light through the shutter and we lose light through the aperture as well because um, it is not a fixed uh, aperture lens. It is a 24 to 105, which goes, I think, from f4 to f7.1. So as you go all the way in, it's going to limit us to 7.1. It's also going to limit our shutter speed to be above 105 and it is giving us 125th of a second. As a result of that, to get the right exposure, the auto ISO has jumped up to 1600. And we are going to take that photo. So that will give us two photos that we are gonna look at on the screen now. Okay, so here we can see the first photo. This is when we were zoomed out. We have an 180th of a second F5 and ISO 500. And when we've zoomed in, the shutter speed has adjusted to match the focal length or to exceed the focal length. It's taken it one, one sixtieth of a second and f7.1 because that's limited by the lens. And as a result of those two things, the ISO has jumped up to fifth to 1600. But you can see they're both pretty well exposed. So it's, the camera has done what we wanted it to. So hopefully that will prove useful. So there we go, all done for today. I hope you found that useful. Auto ISO, good tool to use in changing light conditions for convenience if you're just walking around and want to take um, snapshots in lots of different environments. And it just makes your life easier. So as always, you've stuck it out for the whole video. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel massively. And stay tuned for more videos coming up on photography and travel. I look forward to seeing you next time. See you again.